three, two, one, and we are live. Hello, Mike. Hello, everyone. Hey, Kayo. Hey, everyone. Thank you for joining us in this live session. Please let us know if the video and audio is okay. Can you hear us? Can you see us? Let me check here. Everything looks good. Yep. Hello, everyone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of familiar faces or names, I should say. Hello, everyone. Fantastic. Awesome. All right. Before we start, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on new live episodes. So this episode marks the start of season three of the professional iOS engineering series. So in this free series, we are covering the basics of how to build iOS apps with Swift, test-driven development and clean architecture. There are over 50 videos in this series already. And for many iOS developers, watching this video series marked a turning point in their careers. It was the first time they were exposed to professional development practices like test-driven development, modular design, and clean architecture. And we started this series almost four years ago. And since we don't focus on frameworks that come and go, this knowledge is timeless. We still receive a lot of messages from developers going through it today and still improving their skills and getting better jobs. So we couldn't be happier with the result. But of course, there's more to cover. There are new updates in the platform. Now we have Swift UI. So we have two main goals to this season. One, we're going to migrate the code base to Swift UI incrementally without breaking existing features. And also we want to create a rich model layer to deal with primitive obsession, which is a code smell when using primitive data types, such as strings and integers to represent domain ideas. So domain ideas should have rich model types instead of primitives. So that's the goal, but that's a lot to cover. So we're going to break down into small episodes. Today, we're going to start migrating to Swift UI incrementally with a new layout. So this is how this session is going to work. We'll go fast and we'll have a quick Q and A session at the end. Exactly. Makes sense. That's it. Let's do it. Awesome. All right. So let's have a quick look at the app we created in the previous season. There it is. It's a quiz app with two kinds of questions so far, a single answer question where you navigate to the next question automatically after selecting an answer. There you go. And mm -hmm. a multiple answer question where you need to select at least one option before progressing with the submit button. And at the end, after you answer all the questions, you'll see the result. So very basic application. It also supports light and dark mode. There you go. So the idea is to migrate this implementation that is using UIKit view controllers to Swift UI with a new layout. Let's have a look at the new layout. Boom, this is what we want. As you can see, there are key differences in this layout. First of all, we don't have a navigation bar as we do here. And also in this new game flow, we shouldn't be able to go back and change our answers. You can only go forward. So we need to get rid of this okay. back button as well. And the submit button that is in the top navigation bar, we'll go to the bottom here only for the multiple answer question. Make sense? 
Yep. So again, this is a lot to cover. So in this live session, we're going to focus first on this first view, the single answer question layout. I'm going to implement with Swift UI. And the goal is to do it incrementally. So we can first implement the single selection answer, plug it in in the app without breaking existing code or functionality. So let's have a look at the current diagram. This is our architectural diagram. We have six tiny modules here. The UI module, presentation, the scoring, routing, and a generic engine. Of course, we compose all of them in the main module, our composition route. And that's how we keep the modules decoupled from each other as much as we can. And we can compose them in main. So for a new layout, we should only change the UI module. We shouldn't have to change any other module because we're only changing the layout. The functionality so far is going to be the same. And if you were changing presentation logic, we will only change the presentation module. And if you're changing scoring, we change only the scoring module and so on. The idea is that we can make specific changes in specific modules without breaking other modules. The changes are localized exactly. and all the modules are fully tested with automated tests. So we are confident making changes. So that's it. Our goal is to add a Swift UI view here in the UI layer and compose it in main with the rest of the modules. Make sense? Mm -hmm. And we want to do it without breaking any other module. Only the UI needs to change. So that's the goal. All right. Stop the application and let's start. So we have here our project structure. As you can see, it's following the folder structure with the modular breakdown of the code. Mm -hmm. So UI, presentation, routing, scoring. And within the UI folder, we have the UI kit implementation using UI view controllers. I'm going to create now a Swift UI implementation. So let's start by creating a Swift UI view. And this case is the single answer question view. So let's call it single answer question. All right, and so far we've been test driving everything in this code base, even the view controllers. So the question now is, should we test drive the Swift UI views? What do you think? Well, I'm sure some people will say yes, some people will say no. Of course, it depends. Yes. Just like when we were test driving view controllers, some people said, you don't need to test drive view controllers. Test only view models, yes. test only presenters. Well, we like to test as much as we can. And we like to test drive mm -hmm. as much as we can. So the question is, should we test drive Swift UI views? It depends. It depends. If the logic is inside the view, yes, you should test it. If the view has logic, you should test that logic. But if your view doesn't have logic, you don't need to test it. Makes sense. Exactly. Uh, Swift UI preview can uh, test basically the layout, and that's that. So you don't have to uh, test manual test uh, with unit tests, for example, the 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 layout part. But the logic, sure. Yep. Exactly. So if your view has only layout, you can use the preview to have a very quick look at how it looks. Does the layout look how it should? Then it's good to go. Okay. So the idea is to move logic away from the views so you don't need to test it. Mm -hmm. So if it has zero logic, you don't need to test your views. 
because you don't need to test or you need test layout or styles. You don't test frames, for example, right? Unless you are creating a layout engine, then you should probably test the frame calculation. So it's all about fast feedback. Can you get fast feedback about your code? Here, we can get fast feedback with a preview. Mm -hmm. Because unit tests for layout, for testing frames and styles, they are fragile because they depend on the environment. They depend on the simulator you're running. And there are many device sizes. There are dynamic fonts, color schemes that change all the time. So even running unit tests on different device or iOS versions, you may have different results. That's why a better way of testing visuals or creating regression tests for layout is to use snapshot tests. They will check pixel by pixel how the UI looks. And you can take a snapshot for specific device, iOS versions and frames. So if you want to test layout or automate the testing with regression tests, you use snapshot tests. And we cover that extensively in the iOS Lead Essentials program. But here, our goal is to keep logic away from the views, so we don't need to unit test it. And we can speed up the feedback loop with previews. Make sense? Exactly. So yes. This way, we don't need fragile unit tests based on dynamic layout. We can rather rely on previews and snapshot tests for the layout checks. And logic will go into other components, like view models, presenters, etc. Okay. So since we are migrating from the view controller, we want to keep pretty much the same logic. Mm -hmm. So in the question view controller, we have a question string as the model for the question, an array of options, strings as well. These allow multiple selection as a Boolean which controls if we're going to allow mode selection or not. But in this case, we're going to have separate views in SwiftUI, one for the single answer and one for the multiple answer. So thus, we don't need a Boolean and we don't need logic in the view. We keep the logic somewhere else. And we also have a selection callback string that we call when the user finishes the selection. And we also have a title with the question number. Right. Because the title is part of the view now. Yes. Our title now, whoops, is here. This is our title. Mm -hmm. Instead of being in the navigation bar, you'll be part of the view. So let's bring this model into our views. So we're going to need a title, string, a question, whoops, question string, options, string. Mm -hmm. Whoops. We don't need the Boolean because we're going to have separate views, one for single selection and one for multiple selection. And we need a callback when the user selects an answer. But in the single answer question, you can only select one answer. So instead of an array, it could be just a single string. And as you can see here, we are using strings for all the types. And this is part of the primitive obsession we mentioned in the beginning. And we're gonna deal with it in another episode with a rich model layer. All right. So that's pretty much what we need to be able to lay out our view, a title, a question, an array of options, and a selection callback when there is a selection. Title, question, array of options. Okay? Okay. All right. So let's create here some previews with some data. First, 
a title, uh, one of two, a question, what is Mike's nationality? Some options. And a selection, which doesn't matter right now. So some options here, Portuguese. Is Mike Portuguese? <laughs> Is Mike American? Greek or Canadian? Do you know? <laughs> well, you should have watched it. Spoiler alert, season one gives the answer away. <laughs> Let's also create a another <clears throat> version in dark mode because we want to support dark mode mm -hmm. as well. Right. Boom. There you go. Okay. Two previews. One dark, one light. Okay. So with the previews in place, with the data we want, now we can implement the layout and have quick feedback how it looks. So this is our test mechanism here for the layout, the previews. And as soon as we're happy with the layout, you can snapshot that layout and have regression testing with the snapshots. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So the layout here is a bunch of views stacked vertically. Okay. So let's embed this view in a vertical stack. And the first text is going to be the title. Then we have the question. And for each option, we're going to have a label as well for each option. Boom, look at this. Very fast feedback we get. Awesome. Mm -hmm. We can also align this stack the leading alignment. So they're all aligned left. Let's make some space here. Zoom in. Okay. Yep. 100%. Boom. There we go. Fantastic. Okay. What else do we need here? The selection here, the options, they are clickable, right? You can tap on them and something should happen. So we can embed them mm -hmm. in a button. So what is going to happen when you press the button? Uh, we don't know yet. There you go. Okay. And we also need the circle. which is a circle view. <laughs> a bit gigantic. So let's style it yeah. with a frame. 40, 40. There you go. And we want only the borders. So we can use a stroke, stroke. And the color okay. we want, which is the secondary color. We can also change the line width. It could be 2.5. Make it a bit bolder. That yep. is. Now let's style the option. The font here is title. Mm -hmm. If we use the given fonts style here, we get dynamic type automatically right so the weight is medium so let's leave it default color custom 
Actually, it's secondary as well. Yeah. Ooh, look at that. Well, look at the button. It's very small. Right. It doesn't. It doesn't take the full width. Exactly. So we can create here a V stack as well, or a horizontal stack in this case, for the views. Mm -hmm. So now they are stacked horizontally, and we can add a spacer to tell it to take the whole space available. So the button now is full width. OK. We can also add some padding to the VStack. So now this is the whole clickable yeah. area. Much, much better. That's the H stack. Yeah, padding to the H stack for yes. the button and the circle. So the circle and the text, sorry. And as you can see, the feedback is really fast. OK, so that's it for this view. But I don't want this extra spacing in between here, so let's set a spacing of zero in the vertical stack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look at that now. OK. And we can group the header labels in a V stack as well. leading alignment and let's leave some spacing here 16 mm -hmm. there you go now let's style the title it's blue the font is headline Headline? Yeah, I think we can use headline. Looks good. Medium. All right, that's it. I think so. We can go to the question. So the question, font is large. And medium weight. That's it? Uh, yeah. I guess we can add some padding as well. Yeah. Awesome. OK, that looks similar to the design. Do you feel like we need to test what we're doing here with this preview, just the layout? No, the feedback is immediate here, so I'm I'm fairly confident that what we're doing works. There's no logic so far, right? Yeah. We pass all the data it needs and we render it on the screen. Okay. So we want this to be pinned to the top here, mm -hmm. which means we need to add a spacer in the bottom to take all the space possible. Boom. There it is. Are we done? Okay. I think Maybe a bit we from the top. Yeah, exactly. Some padding there. Padding top. Yeah, that's it. We got our view ready. Very fast feedback. What do you think? Yeah, I think it works. All right. There's no logic here. Just layout and styles. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Dark mode works as well. Let's test the dynamic type. Uh, dynamic type, let's say extra, extra, extra large font. Boom, there you go. Awesome. It automatically adapts to whatever user preference. That's it. Let's commit, add a single answer question.
Mm -hmm. And what we can do now is to extract some subviews that can be reused. For example, the header here, title and question, is exactly the same for the multiple answer question. So we can reuse it. Awesome. So let's extract this view with extract subview. And we can call it question header. And we need to pass here the title and the question. I don't know why Xcode doesn't do that for me automatically. It's a bit unfortunate, but maybe in a future release. Question, question. Okay. All right. And let's move it to a new file. Swift UI view, question header. All right. We also get the preview for this mm -hmm. new view, as long as we pass <laughs> a title and a question. Try again. Boom. Okay. And since this is a small view, let's size it to fit. Look at that. Awesome. Beautiful. Let's commit. Yeah, everything works. Extract question header subview. All right, we can even extract the cell. Mm -hmm. Extract subview. And this is a single answer style. And it's pretty much a text selection, right? We're selecting a text answer. So we can call it um, single text selection cell. Yeah. Something like that. That makes sense. And it needs the option, <laughs> which could actually be, I don't know, text to match the mm -hmm. name. Yeah. of the type it's generic exactly in in this context it's just text and it also needs an action what happens when you click on it right uh selection a cell selection which is a closure void to void make sense awesome yes so let's pass here text is option and selection for now, it's nothing. Mm -hmm. Still works. You can even interact with it. Look at this. You can click anywhere. Yeah, pretty neat. Okay, let's move it to a new file. Mm -hmm. single text selection cell. Let's give it a text, uh, a text. We don't care about the selection. Whoops, what's going on? Resume. Size that fits. Beautiful. Okay. What have we done? Extract single text selection cell sub view. Mm -hmm. So the feedback is really, really good with Swift UI. It is, yes. But now we have the selection handler here that when we select something, select a cell, we should call the selection handler with the option. And we can argue that this is logic, logic that should be tested. Yeah. What do you think? 
Exactly. I think it is. <laughs> Absolutely it is. <laughs> yeah. But Swift UI views are not very testable. That it's not that easy to just instantiate a view and press buttons on it. Mm -hmm. So you can rely on UI tests is an option, but I find it is slow and fragile as well. Having to run the app and tap on buttons, it's quite slow and has multiple points of failure. So it's all about managing the risk in your code base. Do you feel like there is a huge chance of someone breaking this functionality of passing here something wrong, like passing the title here? Could happen. A refactoring Absolutely. gone wrong. And how can we prevent that? We're going to show you in the next episodes by using rich types. So we cannot pass the wrong thing here. If you have a type like an option, you cannot pass by mistake a question or a title into the selection handler, right? So that's why we need to solve the primitive obsession code smell, what every, where everything is a primitive, like a string. Mm -hmm. But for now, how can we test that the selection handler works without UI tests? So we have a couple of solutions here. For example, we can create an interactable test preview. So let me comment this logic and let's create an interactable test preview. So we can call it single answer question test view which is a Swift UI view. So let's get the body. And here we can render our view. Plus we can keep some state here of the selection. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we can start empty like none and we can actually render that selection on screen so let's put this in a v stack and we can render here last selection plus selection make sense and when there's yes. a selection we update the selection state with the yes. selection. So our previews now could be simply the test views. Mm -hmm. Whoops. Exactly. We wrap them in this test view. Look at this. Let's selection none. And if we select something, nothing happens, which means it's not working. So how can we get fast okay. feedback without running the app? We can create test previews. Let's see now. Boom, there you go. So this is a quick way you can test your views without running the app. You create a test preview that you can interact with. Make sense? This Absolutely. is one option. Yes. It's not the only option. So let's commit here. Add interactable oh interactable is this a word interactable oh, almost <laughs> let's make it a word so add interactable single answer question test view preview boom so this is one option so option one ui tests i find them slow and flaky i don't like to rely on them so second option we can create rich types that prevent us from passing the wrong values. Third option, we can create test interactable test previews and we don't need to run the app. This is not the app. This is a preview that we can run mm -hmm. very quickly to test the behavior. But of course, it's not automated. We still need to interact with it. So it's not 100% automated, but it drastically improves the feedback loop as you don't need to run the app. And there are more options. In future episodes, we're going to show different options like moving the logic to more testable components, 
like view models and using the rich model types and also writing unit tests on the, Swy on the Swift UI views by traversing the view hierarchy. It's a bit more advanced, but it can be done. So don't miss out, subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss out on the new episodes. Okay, for now, let's judge that the selection handler is low risk and we can move on since we have this interactable preview that proves that it works without even running the app. Make sense? Exactly. Yes. And it is because it's, it's low risk. The cost also for testing it is extremely low with this uh, wrapper. Test view. Yeah, but you still need to tap on it manually. Yes. <laughs> All right, so the layout is ready. We are done. We are done with the layout of the first view. Now, fantastic. we need to plug it with the other modules by composing it in the main module. So we have a view controller factory that creates the view controllers. Now we need one that creates Swift UI views. Make sense? Okay. <laughs> yes. So here we create view controllers with a factory. Now if we replace this factory with another one that creates Swift UI views, the app should just work. Exactly. We shouldn't have to change any other module. We just compose the modules with a new factory that creates Swift UI views. Let's have a look at the factory. Yeah. So in the main module, we have an iOS view controller factory, which should probably be called now an iOS UI kit view controller factory. Okay. Because it's specific for UI kit and UI view controllers. Let's also rename the tests for the factory. So refactor rename whoops got stuck <laughs> xcode got stuck with the refactoring boom worked all right ios ui kit view controller factory let's run all the tests so we don't need to test the swift ui layout but we need to test the factory Let's first commit the rename, rename um, UI kit view controller factory. Did I break some? I don't think so. Let's... No, it's building. Okay. Test is passing. Okay. All right. So now let's create a Swift UI view controller factory. And it's going to be very similar to this one. Mm -hmm. So I think we can copy and paste it. <laughs> These are the tests, by the way. Yeah. Starting with the tests, of course. So iOS, Swift UI, View Controller Factory tests. Makes sense? Mm -hmm. Copy the code, then change to do the new thing. It's the simplest, quickest way of doing it with confidence. All right, exactly. iOS Swift UI view controller factory test. And it should, the SUT, the system under test is an iOS Swift UI view controller factory. Make sense? Yes. Of course, we don't have one yet. Let's create it in main. iOS Swift UI view controller factory. All right, let's just copy and paste this quickly here. Kyle, why are you copying and paste code? <laughs> can see season two of uh, the professional iOS engineering series and you learn. We could have just changed <laughs> the, answer to the UI kit view controller to create the Swift UI views, but I want to keep both factories to show you how easy it is to replace one and the other and not break the app and still works. That's why I'm copying and pasting and change the new one. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. This is our 
iOS and SwiftUI view controller factory that creates question view controllers for the single answer model type. Make sense? Yes. So we need to create now Swift UI views for the single answer. So we have tests for the single answer and tests for the multiple answer factory methods. We're not going to change the factory methods for the multiple answer yet because we don't have this view ready. This is in another yes. episode. Right now, it's only the single answer view. So instead of creating question controllers, we need to create the single answer question. So it should return single answer question that was created by the factory, the system under test. So how are we going to do that? First of all, we don't need to pass a question here. Okay. Let's call it make single answer question. Mm -hmm. The question is going to be the single answer question that is created here as a test helper. It's a question of type single answer. And instead of question view controller, it needs to return a single answer question. But a Swift UI view needs to be embedded in a UI hosting controller. So let's import Swift UI. And let's cast the view controller into a UI hosting controller. And the root view type is a single answer question. Make sense? Yes. So we can return here the root view of the hosting controller, which is, which should be a single answer question. Make sense? That's it. Yes. And of course, the casting can fail, so we return an optional. Mm -hmm. That's it. Let's change the test now. We expect a view, make single answer question, and it returns an optional. So we can unwrap the optional with the XCT unwrap test helper. Make sense? And if it's optional, exactly, it's yes. going to throw. So we need to mark the test method as throws. Exactly. And if it throws, mm -hmm. it generates a test failure. It doesn't crash. Exactly. So the first test, the single answer should have a title created by the presenter, which is this title, 3 of 10 or 1 of 2, whatever. Make sense? Mm-hmm. The second test is testing the question. So the view question should be Q1, which is set up in our single answer question, Q1. Mm -hmm. Now, we should also have options. So view options is the options for the single answer question. And it doesn't need the boolean single selection because you are using we are using the type system to define if it's multiple or single selection. Yes. Boom, that's it. Let's mark the tests as throws and throws. Of course, you could even have all the assertions in one test if you want. But then if you have more than one assertion in a single test, you would have to give a nice message here to improve the feedback. Let's run the test. They should fail because we are not creating the views yet. There you go. Fantastic. Tests. So the view controller now should return UI hosting controllers, which is a Swift UI type. All right, so we should return here a UI hosting controller with the root view single answer question with a title. What is the title? The um, the presenter title. So we need the to presenter, the presenter exactly here. 
the title we are using is the presenter title for the view controllers. We want the same title. So it's presenter mm -hmm. title. Then the question is the value of the enum case. The value defined within the enum case, yes. Mm -hmm. Options is the same. Options. Options, yep. And selection should be the mm -hmm. answer callback. But the answer callback expects an array of strings. But exactly. Whereas the single selection. selection can only select one. Yeah. So we need to wrap this selection into an array. And we can say that this is logic that should, that should be tested. And that's right. It should be tested. So for now, yes. let's not do that. Let's do nothing. Can we run the tests? Yay, passing. It's passing, but it's not doing the right thing, which means we are missing a test. The <laughs> test for this selection. Makes sense? Yes. All right. So let's add a new test. A test that creates view controller with answer callback. Mm -hmm. So we need to give here an answer callback. And we need to capture the answers so yep. we can assert. So append the received answer. So let's create an answers okay. variable where we can accumulate the answers received. So we are accumulating an array and the answer is an array of strings. So this is an array of array of strings. That's it. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. And we need to assert equal. Well, it should start. Um, empty empty yeah. answers should be empty you shouldn't have selected anything until you actually select something but when you select view selection with the view options i don't know the first one zero mm -hmm. the answers should contain an array with the option zero whatever that option is make sense yes and let's add just one extra one to make sure it's working properly. Yes. It accumulates everything, yes. So if we select another option, it should also give us that other selection. Make sense? Let's mm -hmm. run the test. It should fail. It does fail. It's not selecting anything. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Because we need to pass the answer callback here and embed the answer into an array. Run the test again. Boom, it's passing. Which means we are done. That's we it. We are done with the factory. Yeah. Let's commit. Commit. Add iOS Swift UI view controller factory. Boom. Now we can run the app with the new factory. So first let's run the app with the old factory. Let me Find a simulator. Boom, there you go. As you can see, we still use the old layout with the view controller. But now we can just replace this factory here with the Swift UI view controller factory. And boom, we get a new layout. Awesome. No other modules were changed just by changing the view controller factory we run the same app with a new ui the same logic nothing changed just a new ui that's the goal now we have a sweet exactly. ui view controller factory and we can just swap these factories as needed it's a prime example of modular design swapping what you need for something and when else. we select greek he goes to the next question and he shows the old layout for the multiple one because it's not done yet. Make sense? Mm -hmm. We can do it incrementally. And that's how you can incrementally adopt Swift UI in your apps. Yeah. So if submit, it still works. Look, the selection, Greek. 
we change it Canadian boom there you go it also supports beautiful dark and light mode makes sense yes but one thing I noticed is the the title is still the old the one. old style of title all right so mm -hmm. title and formatting is part of the presentation layer so if you want to change the mm -hmm. title format you just change the presentation layer let's have a look presentation question question presenter there you go title let's change it starting with a test question presenter right now the first question it shows question number one what we want is one of number of questions in this case we have two questions so right. one of two and in the second case when we have two questions and we are showing the second question it should be two of two let's run the tests failing of course let's make it pass so the format now is the current index of questions count run the test passing all right let's commit implement commit. new question title format let's not commit to the app delegate let's run the app and we get the new title in both screens look at that yeah. you didn't have to change the view controllers to change the title because it's localized this change in a single module in the presentation module make sense yes so even though we didn't have to change so we didn't have to change any view controller even though there is a new title and that's the power of good separation of concerns you can make changes in independent modules you just need to compose them later on so yeah freedom so that's that's how Basically. swift ui fits in a clean architecture it fits in the ui module as a framework because swift ui is just a ui framework and frameworks shouldn't ideally have a huge impact on the design of your app if by adopting swift ui you need to completely redesign your app maybe there's something wrong with your design maybe your app is too coupled with the framework and when the framework changes it may break your app so ideally your app should be decoupled from the frameworks as much as you can so it's easier to adopt new frameworks and updates and you can also develop, maintain, extend, and test your components in isolation. And you can migrate incrementally without breaking other parts of the application. Make sense? Look, look how it. easy it was to add this new view here without affecting other parts of the code base. So this is a separation of concerns and modularity. And that's how it can help you manage complexity especially as your app grows this is a simple app but imagine if you have a gigantic app you can migrate to a new framework incrementally as needed because the changes are localized in a single place in a single module and they don't affect multiple modules ideally make sense keeping the risk small yes so that's it for this live session we hope it helps you achieve a good separation of concerns in your apps when needed and also that it helps you migrate your apps to swift ui incrementally as needed as well in the next episode we will implement the multiple answer question now let's have a quick q a all right where's the chat yeah, got many, many questions. Thank you all for your comments and for joining in. I truly did not expect that. Wow, um, 255? Yeah. It's... People, awesome. Thank you, everyone who joined us. I don't know where to start from. They... All right. There are some people fighting here. Don't fight people. <laughs> All right. Any question you see there, Mike? 
Uh, yeah, Gordon has one here at the bottom. It says, I'd be keen to know how we can introduce Swift UI on a component level. For example, inside a UI table view mm -hmm. cell, would we still use Swift UI here? Yes. Yes, you could. They interop pretty well with with UI the hosting. Kit. Yeah. You can. I guess. Yeah. So yes, you can also migrate incrementally with portions of your screen. It doesn't need to be the whole screen that changes. Mm -hmm. What about using the new Swift UI lifecycle? We're gonna cover this later in the next episode. Because we, mm -hmm. we are migrating incrementally. We don't wanna make big changes in one go. One view at a time. When it's fully migrated, then we can fully migrate to the whole life cycle with Swift UI. All right. Someone is asking why you used self. Why I used self? Where? Was it for the um, key path? For the view. I'm not sure. For the for each. Yes. Yeah, it, con it needs to conform to identifiable, but strings don't conform to identifiable. So we need to provide an ID. And we just use self because strings are identifiable. Yeah. No, they're not identifiable, but they are equatable. They serve as their own ID because they are unique, right? Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yep. We have another one by VJ Tholpati. Swift UI code in general comes across like a pyramid of doom. Does pulling code into subcomponents help make this better? Yes, definitely. You should break down your UI into small views that can be composed. Exactly. And reused, mm -hmm. right? Composed and then reused. That's like how you can save um uh make 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 your situation better and not having this pyramid of doom or at least not many levels in the pyramid yes so also they're asking if two answers have the same value what would happen in the for each if two answers have the same value like portuguese and portuguese what would happen whoops let's see It works. It works. <laughs> mm -hmm. Any other question? Um, Are you guys using Swift UI in your production apps? No, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> but yes. we are starting to migrate right now. So very soon we will. Carlos says, I look very Greek. I don't know <laughs> what that means. <laughs> Thank you, I guess. <laughs> All right. Are you planning to put Swift UI content in the academy classes? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Of course. All right. That's it. That's it for this live session. Thank you very much for joining us. If you enjoyed this session, like the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on new episodes. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time. Bye, y'all. See ya.